In this section of the webinar, we're going to talk about neuroscience approaches for effective online education. The objective of this section is to understand how the behavioral or neuroscience approaches can be utilized in order to provide guidance in terms of how the learning or the teaching pace and structure should be developed and tailored for the identified needs in order to maximize its impact. One model to be used in this area is the one known as the AGES model. AGES is an acronym coming from attention, generation, emotions, and spacing. Attention is critical. We have to keep it once we got it. And we must be aware that the average attention span is five seconds. Then generating insights takes time. Learning is definitely a journey. People need time and opportunities to make their own meaning out of the learning process. Then we must not forget that emotions govern. The stronger we feel the right emotions, the more we learn. And space learning is the one that sticks. Longer term recall is best when we learn over several settings. The problem with attention is that it changes on a moment by moment basis. If the learners are not focused on what they are learning, they are never going to be able to remember what they just learned. Basically, learning occurs when we're focusing on one topic without distraction. And we must avoid multitasking or mind wandering of our students. Um, a solution to keep the attention once we got it is to use multiple learning assets to create more opportunities for attention. This means that maybe instead of a one hour long training session, we could provide it, we could divide it into several chunks that could be accessed during the own time of the, of the learners. Or if video is not required, we, can, we could use a podcast. And this information could be listened to while the student is, for instance, taking a morning walk. Or we could imagine some email campaigns that would end up in the inbox of the student every morning with constantly updated information. Then uh, the problem with generation is that learners can't absorb information in a passive way. In order to learn, we must take an active role in the learning process. We have to create our own mental links um, to the information that we learn. So instead of uh, just providing one opportunity to practice, we can create social, formal, and immediate learning opportunities that allow learners to generate their own meaning on what they are learning. So they have the opportunity to reflect on their thought process surrounding the solution is um, discussed during the session, the learning session. So basically asking the learners to contribute with their own ideas to their own learning will definitely have a deeper impact on the learning process. Then we have to consider emotions. Definitely we learn best when uh, something triggers an emotion. We make connections within our brains that reinforce the information that we just got. And the, the emotion generated is very much individual. I think we are all aware of uh, 
classroom situations or Zoom situations where out of the same content, the same information and the same way of it being delivered, some students are bored while others engaged. Some are delighted while others are frustrated. So we must develop learning assets with learners' emotions in mind. So we can create experiences unique to their emotions. And then the spacing uh, refers to the fact that long-term retention of the information um, we got is improved when we learned over spaced intervals as opposed to large information dumps. So we have to provide opportunities for learners to be able to revisit the content of what's delivered in engaging ways. We want uh, learners to return to the material that is shared with them with a specific frequency. Ideally, we must uh, leave the space for one good night's sleep between two learning sessions. And now the time has come to check a bit um, the learnings we got um, up to this part of the, of the webinar. So the question is, um, what is AGES, A-G-E-S, in the AGES model coming from? If you answer that the AGES model stands for attention, generation, emotions, and spacing, you got it right. If not, you should revisit the video in order to um, consolidate the learning so far. Furthermore, we're going to discuss about some strategies to boost the attention and to motivate students. There is a wide range of such uh, strategies, uh, but especially when we're talking about online learning, we must pay attention to, to the goal setting. This is the first part, the first step of the, uh, of the process in order to be able to boost the attention and to keep on motivating the students. Once we agreed on the goals, we have to give the students the liberty of choice with regards to the place and the time of their studying. We must provide for increased autonomy and create opportunities to collaborate amongst the learners. And definitely, we have to rely on the analytical and critical thinking of the students and give them the opportunities to put this at good use. In order to keep on building the engagement and the motivation of the students with the content and the activity of the learning material, we have to provide them with a variety of content. Uh, we have to create short introductions to each module so they know what to expect. We have to be very clear when we're giving the guidance um, needed to complete the course activities. Um, so we help them gaining a deeper understanding of the content of the course. Uh, when we're sending homework, we have to remember to send also reminders with the due dates for each assignment. And we have to encourage them to keep on asking questions. The students need to have the space to share reflections on the learning and to support their abilities to explore, edit, and create their own content. We're going to continue talking about different strategies to generate brain plasticity and learning connections. One such strategy 
is the constructivism. And the uh, constructivist learning environments are characterized by six main items. First, the, one, first, the first one is that it provides multiple and complex representations of reality, avoiding simplification. The other one is that it emphasizes the knowledge construction in relation to its content instead of just knowledge reproduction. Then it emphasizes authentic tasks in meaningful contexts rather than just abstract instructions out of context. It provides learning environments such as real world setting or case-based learning instead of predetermined sequences of instructions. It encourages practice-based on thoughtful reflection and supports collaborative learning through social negotiation instead of competition among learners. Another strategy generating brain plasticity and learning connections is the connectivism. It relies on eight main principles. The first one is the one saying that learning and developing knowledge rest in a diversity of opinions. The second, the learning is a process of connecting specialized nodes or information sources. Then, another principle states that learning may reside in non-human appliances. The capacity to know more is more critical than what is currently known. Then, the fifth principle states that nurturing and maintaining connections is needed to facilitate continual learning. The ability to see connections between fields, ideas, and concepts is a core skill. The accurate, up-to-date knowledge is the intent of all connectivist learning activities. And finally, decision-making is itself a learning process. And finally, we're going to talk about some strategies for understanding timing. One of them is setting SMART objectives and goals. SMART is another acronym that comes from specific, measured, achievable, relevant, and timed. Specific means that we have to state clearly the who, what, where, when, and why of the goals or the objectives of the learning activities. Those objectives, they have to be measurable. We cannot improve only what we can measure. They have to be achievable, meaning that they have to be challenging, but definitely not impossible in order to avoid generating frustrations. They also have to be relevant. They have to be closely connected to the bigger objective. And of course, they have to be timed. Only a completion date holds every one of us account accountable. Other strategies to be used in order to generate brain plasticity and learning connections are gamification, lesson storytelling, holding large online scientific competitions, or group activities. <laughs>